All right, welcome back to the Plum Conference 2021. And with me now is Susanna Lauren from Funka, who's going to talk about accessibility in authoring tools. And I'm really pleased to have her speaking today because accessibility compliance is something that's very near and dear to me. It's something that we know institutions and government are requiring it. It's very important to Plone. It's one of the great strengths of Plone. And so with that, please take it away, Susanna. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, let's see where I am. Here I am. Okay, so um, thank you for having me. Uh, it's really uh, dark and evening here where I am in, in Stockholm. So excuse me for, for being kind of blurred and, and dark, but I'll try to enlighten you anyway uh, with this speech. So I'm going to present to you built-in accessibility in authoring tools. So my name is Susanna Lorin. I am the Chief Research and Innovation Officer at a small consultancy called Funka. We are accessibility specialists uh, covering the EU more or less, and, and also we do some work in North America as well, but we are usually uh, focusing on the EU <clears throat> part of, of the market. Uh, I have been the CEO of the company for 16 years until now uh, moving up, I would say, to this position where I can do only the really interesting things and I don't need to bother about the boring administration. So that's really, really beneficial. I get to work with only the most important things in life. Um, I am a strategic advisor to the European Commission and also to seven right now um, uh, national agencies, um, national governments in um, in Europe. Uh, I am leading the WEDEX group, which is the Web Accessibility Directive Expert Group um, that is supporting the European Commission and the member states in the transposition of accessibility legislation. And I'm also one of the technical experts in the ETSI Special Task Force 536, and that is the standardization body responsible for developing the EN standard, the EN 301549, which is the, uh, the European standard uh, providing the minimum requirements for the European accessibility legislation. Um, so if you find the directive difficult to understand or the implementation acts stupid or the standard um, bad in any way, then you can always blame me. So happy to get any, any input from, uh, from all of you. And right now I'm working with the, <clears throat> the review of the Web Accessibility Directive for the Commission again. Uh, so the directive has only been uh, in, applied for three years, but still we are already making the review. So it's also a, a possibility to make sure that the, that the enforcement and implementation of the directive is, is working the way it should. Um, and I'm also very much nowadays uh, into cognitive accessibility, which is kind of the focus area where I'm most mostly interested uh, right now. But of course, many of my assignments right now are also pointing forward to uh, the European Accessibility Act, where the European legislation on accessibility will be broadened and increased to also cover part of the uh, private sector, so products and services in, in certain industries. So <clears throat> we have increased accessibility requirements in Europe uh, right now, um, with first the procurement directive, then the web accessibility directive covering public sector, and then the European Accessibility Act, which will mean, which means that that uh, certain products and services need to comply to accessibility requirements in 2025. For example, ba banks, e-commerce, and transportation, and, and other emergency services, and so on. So that's kind of good news if you're into accessibility, but there are also some problems. So. One of the things that makes us a little bit worried about this is how on earth are we going to make this happen? <laughs> because there is a lack of uh, competence and expertise out there. So according to the audits we do, uh, um, we do um, monitor web accessibility for the European Commission. Uh, we have been doing that for many years, um, comparing between different member states and so on. So around 50% of the mistakes done or the issues, accessibility issues that we find in public sector body uh, websites are created by the web authors themselves. It's not technology, it's the people who make the mistakes. So uh, this may be seen as a good thing because that kind of shows the balance between technology and humans and, and we all need the humans to be there. Uh, but on the other hand, this also means that it's kind of harder to to streamline and, and, and scale up uh, this to a good place. 
because not only uh, are most web authors not trained in communication, uh, we have clients in local governments can have 200 or even 500 web authors. They are not communication experts. They have another specialty. They work in the school or they work with transportation or something else. And then they also uh, upload information on the web. So they are, they are not trained um, in information or communication, which make, means it's much harder for them to create content, but especially to create accessible content because they don't do it every day. So even fewer in this you know, big chunk of, of, of the content creators are trained in accessibility. <clears throat> and uh, estimations, I don't know if this is true or not, but, but what the number we work with when it comes to the European ex um, the Web Accessibility Directive is that around 7 million digital interfaces are covered by uh, the, legis the current legislation. And then in 2025, it will be millions more. So I don't know if 7 million is right because no one really knows how many websites and apps there are out there in public sector in Europe, but still there are many. So if, if all of these 7 million websites have, I mean, even if they just have two web authors, some of them have 10, maybe 50 or 200 and 500. I mean, it doesn't really matter what number you land on, but just times around 7 million, that means many people that needs to be trained. And that's good news for us and everyone else uh, providing accessibility training, of course. So we should be happy, but really it is a problem because this just simply won't scale. It doesn't, doesn't matter how good training we provide or how many of us there are out there and there's too few. <laughs> but even if we, we could recruit people and, and more companies are, are popping up and, and they are um, because of the market uh, demands, Still, this is not feasible. This will not ever work because people go on parent, parental leave or they change jobs and they come new people all the time. So we will just keep on training, 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 and there will also always be a problem here with the, or the challenge rather, with, with people who don't really know how to uh, create accessible content. So I don't think we were the only ones thinking this, but we thought, what if the authoring tools could do things automatically with the new fancy technology uh, with machine learning and all these things, why couldn't we kind of automize accessibility in a better way? So if authoring tools could either provide accessibility by default, or if that is not completely possible, at least support web authors in a better way than they do today, that would really improve the situation. It would facilitate for, for web authors, and it would hopefully make sure that, that kind of the basic um, accessibility challenges out there would be easier to solve. So we applied for an EU funded project uh, and got awarded uh, to see if this could possibly be um, fixed in, in a way uh, that would be beneficial to all public sector agencies in Europe, to the Commission and also of course to end users with uh, disabilities. So we started with mapping uh, the, the authoring tool market in public sector bodies in Europe. And I know this seems kind of narrow, but that is how European funding works. You need to be very clear on the definition on what you are, are researching. So that was the scope. Um, uh, public sector bodies and other bodies uh, governed by public law, which is the coverage, the, the scope of the Web Accessibility Directive. So, we looked at which authoring tools are most in use in public sector bodies in all uh, the EU countries. So, and we found a top 70 or 80, I think, uh, list and Plone is in the top 30 of these. So, <clears throat> and we found that many of them were open source, some are licensed, they are very regional, some are popular in the North, others in the South and so on. But, but we could see clearly that some of them kind of recur uh, quite often. And they have different approaches, clearly, uh, from you know, the, the business models, the, the technology setup and so on, but they also have very common challenges if you look at what the challenges are for web authors. So we interviewed web authors using different of these most popular tools and they claim the same, uh, same things to be difficult. So we thought if that is the case, then there is also a joint potential here. If we could get the leading uh, tool makers and, and providers to work together jointly and share their knowledge, then we could kind of move the whole market um, in the right direction. And if we have a group of, of uh, tool makers that, that kind of lead the way and, and, and be the 
are the front front runners, then hopefully the rest of the market will, will follow as well. So that was the, the basic idea for this research project. So we created a cluster and it was based on a, on a previous kind of a pre-project we did called We for Authors. Uh, so this, this second phase of the project was called We for Authors Cluster. And the cluster members, it's kind of a market cluster really, uh, consisted of both uh, licensed products and open source products and us, Plunka, as the accessibility experts. So we had Kit Concept representing Plone, then Site Vision, that is a Swedish-based licensed products, very, um, not very known, I think, outside of, of the Nordic countries, but very prominent in the public sector uh, in, in our part of, the, of Europe, and also very keen on accessibility. We had civic actions from, uh, from Canada or the US um, representing Drupal, Tiny MCE, the editor Tiny, uh, IAAP, which is the industry organization, the association of uh, accessibility professionals on a global scale. We had JN Beyond representing Joomla and then Nexer in the UK representing um, Umbraco. So we had a really a broad coverage of the most used uh, authoring tools in, by public sector in, uh, in Europe. And we have worked together for 18 months and the project just ended uh, in the end of um, last week of, of August. So it's very fresh, the whole thing. And it has been um, very interesting, very, um, very rewarding for us to see how many good ideas coming from the different uh, uh, partners. And also that our, our basic idea with knowledge sharing really worked in a good way. There has been no I mean, I'm sure there's competition between these players, but in the project, they have really worked together. So it's very, it has been a very nice project to, to lead uh, for me personally. And we have also learned a lot about the web authoring tool market that we didn't know uh, before. So absolutely fantastic also. And I, I would really like to also say thank you to Timo from Kit Concept, who has been uh, contributing in, in a very good way to this, um, to this project and opened many doors to, to other tool makers as well, which is uh, of course needed. So what we did in the project was that we uh, talked to web authors, we did surveys, interviews, and all sort, sorts of stakeholder consultations, uh, trying to understand what is the biggest problems for web authors, what is the most problematic parts of making uh, content accessible, and where do we see the biggest problems, and which of these problems create the biggest problems for the end users with disabilities, so really the whole kind of value chain here. And then when we have looked at or understood where the biggest problems are, uh, how can we solve that in a technically feasible way, and also it should be possible to not only uh, solve in Plone or in Drupal, but really to, to solve it in a more or less generic fashion so that the, the idea, the result of our project could also be used by other, not only the cluster members, but also the, the whole market. That was kind of the essence of the project. So not only did we look at the problem and how we can solve it in trying to um, yeah, invent new, new solutions to this, we also looked at what is already out there. So not again, not only the cluster members, but we also looked at other authoring tools, how they have solved some of these features and see if we could borrow or get inspiration or refine or improve um, uh, functionality that is already on the market. And then the big thing here is that we had the resources to do testing, 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 and testing. And I think that is what, what makes a research project like this different from other Kind of open source projects where you share knowledge and, and, and do joint um, contributions and so on, uh, because here we really had the resources to do uh, extensive user testing. So more than a hundred uh, web authors from local, regional and national agencies in more than 20 countries have been testing our features. So we did first prototyping, of course, and then the user testing, the interviews, the surveys, really making sure you know, in an iterative way that whatever we were uh, providing is actually helping the web authors and also providing accessible results. So a very, very thorough um, agile process in this. And then after or during this testing period, we also made sure that all the recommendations that are the results of the project is something that we all can believe in. So all the cluster members needed to be, to have some kind of consensus or agree on that this way of solving the problem, this 
you know, this way of, of, of doing this is, is the right way and this is how we want to present it to, uh, to the world. So I, um, yeah, and then the, um, the good thing with the European Research Project is of course that there are resources for the uh, partners to, uh, to be able to spend time and, and, and money on, on doing the project, but also the, the result of the project is, is free of charge for anyone to use. So I'll, uh, I think I need to stop sharing and instead start sharing my, I want to show you the result of this. So, um, mm -hmm. and in the meantime, we are playing music. So I now hope that I am sharing my uh, browser. So um, the website where all the project results are presented is called Accessibility Cluster. Uh, dot com and on this website you can find a lot of information about the, the partners and the project and so on but the most interesting part is of course the results so here we present all uh, all the features that we have created so the um the project resulted in 10 uh, features uh, that are accessible by default or providing support both built-in accessibility and also support for the web authors. So the features are a tables creator, uh, the feature to change language, not change language of the whole website, but to change language in a, a part of the website when you have a quote or something like that. Then uh, the text alternative, so the alternative text, alt text, the classic first requirement in, in WCAG. Um, the forms editor, so forms and tables are the two most tricky things for authors generally to, to make accessible. Um, and then uh, a feature for videos, making videos more accessible. So these five are the, uh, the features who are focusing on a specific functionality, if you will, in the uh, authoring. And then we have another feature in presenting how to best present the documentation of accessibility features, because we, we found in the project that even though some uh, tools already have quite good features and functionality for accessibility. The documentation on how to use this or why using it or, or you know, um, that it actually exists, that is lacking or at least is not known to, to that many authors. So the documentation piece is also one of the important features we have created. And then four pieces of different uh, accessibility testing um, solutions. So we have one live testing while you're authoring. So while you're creating your content, just like you have the spell check in Word or something like that, then the, the, um, the tool should be able to, to support you and test for accessibility while you are actually uh, authoring your content. The other testing piece is a testing of uploading when you upload a document, because as any of you would know, if you know accessibility, uh, the world is full of inaccessible PDFs, and that is one of the biggest problems uh, for many users with assistive technology. So being able to test for uh, test the accessibility of a document before uploading it, that we think is would be extremely valuable for, for many web authors. And then we have one testing uh, procedure where we test the content of the page. So everything that you do in the editor, more or less. And then uh, the testing of the whole website, of course, which is maybe better for the website owner or the kind of central uh, authoring uh, department, but, but still very, uh, very valuable. So these are the 10 features that the, uh, that the project resulted in. And the presentation of this is uh, done, uh, we have, you can read in this website also on the user needs and how we selected the features and so on. So all of the background is here as well, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about how we present the, the each feature. There is a video documentation and a technical specification for each of the features. So you can just dig into one of them and, and see um, uh, everything that we have been uh, providing. So, uh, and this, I won't have time to show you the whole video, but, um, just some examples about how this uh, how this works. So we start with 
some introduction, of course, but then um, we explain the, uh, oops, the problem from the end user. So let me see if I can get this working. So am I still sharing this? We're not seeing your shared screen. I, I'm not sure what I'm sharing anymore. I think the sharing has an, oh, we're back to sharing. Yep. So seeing your web page. I hope I'm now again sharing. Sorry for that. So we start with the challenge. So, uh, and now I'm now showing uh, the video where uh, where a blind user is showing his screen reader. So this is the problem with the technical specification from the end user perspective. What is what is the problem here? So we explain the problem and show it also. And then after that, we uh, show uh, actually the, the live code of this. So you can learn how why this is a problem and, and how it looks when it's not uh, entered in the right way so we do we do the example of why this is not working for the assistive technology so providing code examples here is one important part of the of the video documentation and after that we have a web author uh, describing the challenge from the web author perspective so just explaining really uh, what is difficult why it is difficult and how it should work uh, according to this person uh, instead and we have web authors from all, all over Europe uh, doing this, uh, these presentations. And then we go to the solution. So um, we have a prototype or a mock-up where we, where we show with a screen recording on exactly how to, to uh, use the feature and what, what is the point with the, with the feature and what it would help you with. So in this tables creator, we have several, we have two different um, models of, of creating tables. So one for more um, um, simple or, or easygoing templates that are not too complex and where you can kind of work with templates. And another one, if you really want to create a very complex table, then probably you need to kind of create it yourself, but still the system could could provide you with information and support so that the, the resulting table is, uh, is becoming accessible. So after describing exactly how this works and, and what the feature does, we go um, and show uh, again the, uh, the example from, from the user. So now with doing this in the right way, using the feature, what is the result from the end user uh, perspective. So we show again the same user using the same assistive technology, but now with when the feature has been uh, providing the, the correct way of doing it, uh, how it works instead. So this is not only a kind of a presentation or a demo of the feature, but it's also a learning piece, hopefully, so that it will give more information to, to people who want to le learn more about um, uh, how this is done in a good way. And then uh, the video will show you also the, uh, the code done in the correct way. So we have code examples in the video, uh, just to make sure that this is implemented in the way it's meant to be. And hopefully this video documentation combined with the technical specification where you get kind of more, more of the technical side of it uh, will provide not only um, users or web authors using the um, the members of the, the tools from the members of the cluster with more information, but also for any tool provider and tool producer to be either using the features as they are right now, or be inspired to take the best thing we could provide and uh, transform it into something maybe even better in their uh, own tools uh, and or <clears throat> do something completely better and, and challenge this and say that, hey, we wouldn't like to do it in another way. So any of this is of course um, possible. And we just hope that this is going to inspire more authoring tool producers and providers and suppliers to, um, to innovate and create more, even more accessibility features um, that can make sure that the web authors get a, get a that it makes, e makes it easier to, to comply with the regulations and create accessible content.
content for end users with disabilities. So each, each of the feature is presented this way with the, the problem, the challenge, the solution, and examples of, of code. So that's kind of the, the, the end result of all of this together with the technical specifications. There is also further guidance for um, other tool makers, just to make sure uh, that when you implement features like this, that you don't create other accessibility problems, and also to make sure that the, the editing environment is not creating accessibility problems for web authors with disabilities. And there is, there is also uh, a lot of, of videos and events that we have and blogs and articles and, and so on where recordings that you can look at uh, in, for inspiration where we present uh, the different part of the project. So <clears throat> just have to go back to, uh, to my PowerPoint again. So again, this is uh, all free of charge and possible to download and use directly. Um, and hopefully this will spread to, uh, to many, many users. And we have had a lot of, of interest from the community, not only from the web, um, the authoring tool community, but also from public sector web authors who would like to learn more and want to use the features as, as soon as possible. So um, with that, I'll wrap up by saying that we do uh, want to continue working in the in the consortium uh, the project has ended so we don't have any funding currently but we are looking for ways to continue working and i know that we have two or three authoring tools that would like to join us in the second step or third step or whatever um, so that we really hope to be able to refine the features we have already created and also uh, continue creating more uh, more features and more functionality to support web authors so if you would like to know more about the features or uh, look at the videos and download the documentation and so on, you can just go to accessibilitycluster.com um, where everything is, is um, collected. And if you have any questions or would like to join us or know more about the next steps that we are hopefully um, uh, starting soon, you can reach me at susanna.florin at funka.com. So I think I'll stop there. And of course, I'm open to questions from the audience if, if there is still anyone out there. Thank you very much, Susanna. That was a brilliant presentation. I, I love the effort that you've put in to gathering all this information and developing these features. And uh, I, for one, am going to be spending a lot of time reading over your website and the reports. Um, I don't see any questions currently in the Slack uh, or in the Slido, but of course, for our viewers on Loudswarm, we are going to be in the Jitsi. Susanna will be in the Jitsi to take questions or get your comments and feedback. And that's that blue button below the video frame here. And uh, Susanna, thank you again very much. And I hope to have you continue this effort and come back to us and report some greater successes. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference.